the uh, Catholic Church teaches that the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper or the communion literally change into the flesh and blood of Jesus. So as they, you know, pray over it, uh, you know, and they start giving it out, it is not just the bread and, and wine. It is literally, as they believe it, it is the flesh and blood of of Jesus Christ. And they call it transubstantiation. So if the bread is accidentally dropped on the floor, they must pick it up immediately and eat it. Or if it, it fell on something that, you know, so it, it's not edible, they can rinse it away at a special sink that is not connected to sewer system, but it empties into the ground. Because they consider it, you know, the body of Christ. They can flush it down the toilet, you know. And if there is, uh, and they also need to make sure that there is no crumb left on the floor. If there is any particle left, it must be covered with a linen, right? So people won't, you know, step over it. And the place afterwards, after they cleaned it, the place should be cleansed with, with water. Why? Because they dropped a piece of Jesus' flesh. 예수님 살을 떨어, 진짜 살을 떨어뜨렸다고 믿는 거예요. Is that what Jesus is talking about in today's passage? Jesus says that he is the bread of life coming down from heaven. His flesh is the bread that he is giving to the world and they must eat it to have eternal life. Like the Catholics, the Jews took it literally and they wonder how on earth Jesus was going to give them his flesh to eat. When Jesus, re uh, then Jesus really shocks them by saying, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Wow! Are we carnivals? But 먹으라고 그러시는 거예요. 내 살을 내 피를 마셔요. 여러분들은 하나도 안 이상하신가 봐요. In the early days of missionary work in Korea, <clears throat> The Korean populace consider the American missionaries as barbarians. These missionaries were very well educated and they came from a culture that was far more advanced than Korea in every way imaginable. But the truth didn't matter. People believed the wildest rumors about these missionaries. And in 19, uh, 1888, this is just one year after, you know, uh, missionary Underwood came to Korea. <clears throat> They've been here only one year and people spread the rumor saying the Western uh, missionaries, you know, killed and ate the babies. Right? And I think it's related to you know, the Eucharist, uh, the communion, you know, he's saying, oh, this is my flesh, this is my blood, and, right? And the, it, it got out of hand so much that the missionaries could not venture outside, fearing for their lives. It was a really tough time, and a group of people sees a young woman carrying her own baby on her back, 자기 애를 얻고 가는 거예요, 또 젊은 여자가. And they beat her to death, accusing her of kidnapping someone else's baby okay, and trying to sell the baby to the missionaries. Even today, people give all kinds of stories about how crooked the churches are and criticize us more than the criminal organizations.
there are, there are so many parts of this nation, even in our government, that is so corrupt and, and bad, but they're criticizing the church. What harm did we really cause? The churches may have divisions and have quarrels among them, but they do not harm other people, right? And we do not break up families. I had some men, non-Christian husbands of our Gonzanims, you know, and Chisanims, come up to me and they begged me not to call them out. I just 그만 좀 불러가세요. 그만 좀 불러내세요. And I was really hurt. My goodness. Because I think we're doing favors. You know, we are the ones, the church is responsible for keeping that family together. We keep these ladies from doing bad things. We keep these ladies from going to questionable places and and doing, doing wicked things, right? The non-Christian husbands should thank us, should thank our church. We keep their family together. The ladies come to our church and receive healing because of Jesus' love and grace. They come all broken and upset at their husband. 교회 올 때는 막 화가 나고 마음이 아프고 막 이렇게 오는데 은혜 받고 아, 그래서 마음이 딱 풀어지는 거죠. They're touched by Jesus' love. And everything becomes okay. 그 집에 갈 때는 아주 기쁜 마음으로 돌아가는 거예요. How, I mean, 얼마나 좋아요. What a service. What a service. Anyway, there was a grave danger of people misunderstanding what Jesus is talking about, misunderstanding Jesus' analogy of his flesh being the bread of life. Jesus knew of this danger, but he used it anyway. In fact, it seems like that Jesus pushed this analogy so much and made people uncomfortable purposefully. He kept telling them to eat his flesh. Notice how Jesus kept repeating himself in, in this chapter, John 6. Jesus used the word bread 13 times and he talked about eating his flesh five times and drinking his blood four times. People started to get grossed out. Ooh. Peter went like, ooh. And Jesus intended that to drive a point. The word of God is not information. When God speaks, he is not just trying to pass along some information or some ideas or express his feelings. The word of God is purposeful. It is powerful. The scripture says that it is living and active. It is not just a sound. It is not some information that contains, that's contained within that sound. It is living and it is active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword so it can penetrate anywhere, even into our soul. It goes anywhere to get things done, to carry out what God has spoken. Isaiah 55, it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word 
that goes off from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God spoke and this world was created. God spoke and the mountains arose. God spoke and the storms were calm. In fact, the scripture says that the word of God was God. And the incarnated Jesus was the incarnated word of God. So John 1, John chapter 1 starts out this way. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Then in verse 14, he says, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus spoke of eating His flesh and drinking His blood, He was talking about His Word. If a person heard what Jesus spoke, if it is accepted, it will be incorporated into the person's being like eating a bread when you are really hungry or when you are starving and like drinking wine when you are thirsty and exhausted. It will give you life. It will give you strength. It will become part of who you are. It will make changes within you. When we hear the word of God, it shouldn't be taken lightly as if we are listening to a good story. God is not telling us a story. God is not giving us an information. He is giving us this spiritual being, this active and living word of God which has power, and when we accept it, it will enable us, it will drive us, it will revive us, it will give us power, it will change us, it will change our lives, it will change our family, it will change our nation, it will change everything around us if we accept it. Because it's the Word of God, powerful Word of God, the Word of God that created this world. So when we listen to the Word of God, we should take it really, really seriously. If we have read the Bible at least once, if we know the Bible verses, some Bible verses by heart, if we've been listening to the Word of God every week for many years, amazing things should have happened in our lives. Because that is what the Word of God does. Our lives should be full of great testimonies. There must be many fruits of God's Word in our lives. If not, it means that the Word of God is being blocked. That it doesn't have access into us. That we are not eating it like Jesus strongly emphasized. In Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10, we find a shocking secret into receiving the Word of God. And let's read that part one, the, all together. If you have the, excuse me, the handout, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10. Make the heart of this people callous, make their ears dull, and close their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Why is there no healing? Why is there no fruit? According to Isaiah 6.10, it is because our heart is callous. Tak tak heji. Our ears are dull. 
Our eyes are closed. We hear the word of God, but it passes right through us. And we don't understand the word of God. And we do not turn from our wickedness. We continue to do whatever we've been doing. There is no change. The word of God is being rejected in our lives. We must humble ourselves before the word of God. The centurion in the Bible who asked Jesus to heal his servants gives us a good example of someone who are receiving the word of God properly. When Jesus heard his plea, he said he will go. Okay, I will go and I will heal your servant. But then the centurion asked Jesus, just say the word. Just say the word. What a wonderful faith he had. The centurion believed that Jesus' words were powerful and had authority to command anything in this world, even sickness. And he put himself and his whole household under that authority. And Jesus said, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. When we put ourselves under Jesus' authority, things happen because of the word of God. Because it is powerful, because it is God. We hear God's word and we receive it. Then something happens despite the difficulties or impossibilities. Mary heard the message from the angel. And even though she did not understand how, she accepted the word of God. Putting herself under God's authority. Risking her life. And miraculously, she conceived a child. She conceived Jesus. When God says to leave, we submit to his authority and leave. And God takes care of everything. When God says to arise, we receive the strength and ability to arise. Even when we are crippled. When God says to come, we go walking even on water. When we obey, when we take the word of God seriously, when we receive the word of God seriously into our lives, it will give us power. It will enable us. His word, I'm sorry, I lost my place. So, let God speak into your life today. Because God still speaks. God's work is not done yet. He is still speaking into this world. Let God speak into your life. Submit yourself under his authority. His word, let his word come into your life and be able to change everything you will be able to change everything in your life in the time of jesus many sick people chose to do that and jesus spoke to them and miracles happened you are the lord over your own dominion you are the lord you are the king over your own life and there is a war going on over your heart, over your life. Who do you submit to? What I admire about Dr. Lee Hidong, uh, I, I talked about him a couple weeks ago, and how you know he has such a strong faith and what I really admire about him is that he makes it very clear which authority he is under. He doesn't care about anything else. He only cares about pleasing God.
But sometimes when God looks at us, God has to wonder who's, where, where we, we stand, whose side we are really on. Uh, yesterday, I watched just a little bit the beginning part of the soccer game, the final soccer game of the Asian, Asian games. And I got so frustrated. <laughs> And I got so disappointed by Son. Son. 이름은 말하지 않겠어요. Son. 아, 그 Son 때문에 얼마나 제가 속이 터졌는지. I, I don't know if he was really tired because he's, 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 he's one of the oldest one there. Right? 26세요. 일본 애들은 they're under 21. 나이 참 얼마 많이. I, I guess he was tired. 공잘 몰고 가다가 아, 좀 뚫고 가서 좀 공을 넣어주면 얼마나 좋아. 다 가서 막 애들이 있고 막히니까 옆으로 탁 주고. 이쪽 옆으로 탁 주고. 아, I got so, I got so frustrated. 아, 좀 들어가. Just get in there and just, you know, make a goal. And then, uh, 조금 보다가, because I had to finish my sermon today, <laughs> I came to church and I kept working on, on, the, uh, on, on our sermon. And I, I, today I, I started presiding over the, the, our second service. And I needed to chubo. And my office is right next to the printing room where they print jubo. And as I'm typing away my sermon, they're like printing the jubo. And so I went over to get one copy. Right? And as soon as I walked in, I hear, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, kolose, kolose. Did anyone make the goal? And it was isumo. <sighs> and, I, and I looked at the play, the replay, and I looked at the, the replay, and you know, Son, Son was, you know, he was, he was inside, he got inside and he's, he's trying to make room to, to make the shot. Then all of a sudden, this Isumu guy just, just, just jumps in. I don't know where he came from, right? <laughs> and then he just makes the shot and then he went in. You <laughs> And I heard today, one, one pastor told me that he said, Nawa Nawa! <laughs> right? To, to Son. Son is much older. <laughs> and he made a shot. Sometimes, as Christians, we hesitate too much. We think too much. Oh, is this the will of God? Should I do this or should I do that? We think too much and we fail to act when necessary. Like song. And it's really disappointing. Sometimes we need to be like Isumu. And I just jump in there and just. Dawa <laughs> dawa! 제가 왼발은 잘 출시 안 되네요. <웃음> 나와 나와. 오. 나와 나와. Sometimes we need to do that. 나와 나와. 비켜. Get out of the way. I don't care. This is God's will. And I will do it. 나와 나와. And we need to show the world who is the Lord in our life. To whom we submit to. We need to show the world whose word has power over our lives. Whose word has authority over us. Now and now. Let's be obedient to the word of God. Because it is the word of God. It's, it's, it is not optional. 
It is not something that we, can, we just ponder upon and just forget about. It is the Word of God. Let us obey and let us fully take in the Word of God so that He can really do the work inside of us and really change us and really change our lives. So that God can really show the world who's really taking care of us. Who's really over us. So, 세상에 하나님이 다 보여주시도 so, 얘는 내 거야. 건드리지 마. 절로 비켜. So, 하나님도 비켜 비켜 하실 수 있다. <웃음> Let us take in the word of God and as the, the ending on our sermon says, our September special early morning prayer rally is going on. And a lot of word of God is being preached. And let us humble ourselves with longing heart. Lord, speak to me. Speak to me. And change my life. Change everything around me. Let your word work in me so that I can really, really glorify with my life. Let us pray.